Here's a totally contrived example problem for fluid statics. This is the kind of thing that professors like to put in textbook problems and on exams. We've got a pressure over here at location 1 and this chamber is full of air and exposed to that pressure. We've got a pressure gauge over here at location 7 and we'd like to know what it reads. And it's also exposed to air in this chamber over here. In between, we've got some walls, some baffles dividing up this tank. We've got some water over here. We've got some oil sitting on top of it. We've got an air pocket up there. And then we've got some mercury over here. They all have different densities. And as a result, we'll have to follow the path all the way through here to find out what the pressure is over here at 7. Now, our first observation is that air at any kind of reasonable pressure near atmospheric has a density of about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. Water, on the other hand, about a thousand. The oil in this case, let's say, is 900 kilograms per cubic meter. And the density of mercury is about 13,550 kilograms per cubic meter, so much heavier. The elevations, let's say we have 20 meters at location 1, 12 meters at location 2, measured from the bottom, at location 3, 7 meters, location 4, 15 meters, location 5, back down to 8 meters, and location 6, down even further to 7 meters, and finally, H7 is 13 meters. So here's the list of heights. Now we'd like to know what P7 is, and we can only find out P7 relative to P1. So we can find out the difference between P7 and P1. Now looking at it just offhand, I can't really tell whether P7 is going to be larger than P1. But if we walk through around the loop, we'll find out. So we can get P2 equal to P1 plus rho air times G times H1 minus H2. That's just P equal or delta P equal to rho G delta H. Now let's check and make sure that we got this in the right direction. P2 is lower than P1 or the elevation is lower than P1 than it is at 1. So as a result the pressure at 2 should be higher. H1 is bigger than H2, so we've got delta H in the right direction. This is going to give us P2 bigger than P1. So then let's go from location 2 to location 3. Now it doesn't matter that we're going down and then back up again because the pressure increase as we go down this distance will be the same as the pressure decrease as we go back up. So what's important is just the difference in the individual heights because we've got a continuous fluid here, that water. So P3 will be P2 plus density of water times G times H2 minus H3. That's a positive number and that makes sense because P3 is going to be higher than P2. Then P4 will be P3 minus density of oil times G times H4 minus H3. H4 minus H3 is a positive number. But I've got a negative sign there. P4 is going to be bigger We're, or going to be smaller. We're going up through the oil. So that makes sense. Now I could have had H3 minus H4 here and a positive just exactly the same way I've done with these ones. It doesn't matter whether you put the negative there or the negative over here. What you need to do is make sure that when you go up in elevation, the pressure is decreasing. When you go down in elevation, the pressure is increasing. P5 will be for air over the top here. P6, exactly the same arrangement, but this time we've got mercury. So the density of mercury, a much larger number in there, times H5 minus H6. That's a positive number. That's one meter elevation difference and it's going to be a higher pressure at 6 than at 5. So we've got that in the right order. 
And finally, P7, as we go up from here to here, will depend on the density of air and the difference in height between these two. We're going up, so we got a negative over there. If we put all of those together, we wind up with this for P7. P7 was equal to P1 plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, and so on. And for the moment, let's say we just neglect the ones with air because the air density is much, much lower than all the other densities. If we plug all of that in with the three densities, water, oil, and mercury, and calculate that through, we wind up with 111,344 pascals in consistent units, or 111 kilopascals, or about 1.1 atmospheres. So P7 is 1.1 atmospheres greater than P1. Is the density of air important? Well, let's do it again. If we calculate through here and calculate P2, we'll get a little tiny increase. This will be 100,000 pascals plus a 94 pascal increase. So if P1 was 100, pas 100 kilopascals, P2 will be 100 kilopascals, 0 0.094. Very little change because of the air, because of its very small density. So the end result is valid. We do have about a 1.1 atmosphere difference, and just about all of it is due to that mercury. The water and the oil more or less offset each other, but this one meter of mercury over here makes a huge difference in the overall calculation. And we get our 1.1 atmosphere.